let's say I'm creating a bookstore application. And right now that you can see there's no book. So let me add a new book here. And all I can do here is give a book a name. But what I really want to do is be able to assign many authors to a given book. So there's a many to many association between books and authors. If we take a look at the book model, you can see I already have that association set up where a book has many authors through a join model called authorships. It's a pretty standard has many through association. But the problem is how do we handle many to many associations like this in the form? One solution is to use checkboxes like I show in episode number 17. But the problem is that we have so many authors to choose from that this list of checkboxes gets very impractical. It'd be nicer if we had a way to assign them through a text field like this. So here's a text field for inserting authors and as I start typing in the name of an author, I get auto completion. So as you can see here is a list of authors that match that name. And then when I add it, I can add multiple authors in there as well. This is very similar to the interface used in Facebook from sending messages and it handles many to many associations very nicely. But the question is, how do we get this implemented in rails? Well, let me show you. When I initially set out to do this, I experimented with the jQuery UI autocomplete plugin, which worked fairly well, but it required a lot of custom code to handle the tokenized inputs. So I thought there must be some better way that's more specific to handling this. And then I came across a plugin called jQuery token input, which does exactly what I need. I just start typing something in here and then I get a list where I can choose which TV shows I want to add. And they also have a lot more examples here which I recommend you check out. Um, in this case, we have different themes that we can add and use. And if I try submitting the form, it's going to input, submit the text field as a comma separated list of IDs. So I can just parse this on the server side, pretty easy. So let's download this and try it out. So here's what was downloaded and I want to install this plugin into my bookstore Rails app. So inside the public directory, I'll just copy the source files into the JavaScripts directory and the styles here in the plugin into the style sheets directory there. There we go. Now I haven't set up jQuery in my application yet. So to do that, I'll just go to my gem file and add jQuery Rails in here. And then run the bundle command to get that installed and then run Rails generate jQuery install to install jQuery. And then finally, we just need to include our plugin JavaScript and style sheet in our layout file. So in here where I'm including my style sheets, I'll just add the token input style sheet that I copied over. And in my JavaScripts, I'll add the jQuery token input uh, JavaScript file that it provided. All right, so now that we have jQuery and our plugin installed, let's see what's involved in adding our authors field here in our new book form. So this is what our form partial looks like where we just have our name field and I want to add a new field here for authors. I'll just call it author tokens and give it a label called authors and use author tokens here as well. And we don't have an author tokens attribute on our model yet. So let me first add that as well. So inside my book model, I need getter and setter methods for this attribute. I'll first make a getter method by just using our attribute reader. I'll call it author tokens. And then I'll create a setter method manually because I need this to actually um, parse the comma separated list of IDs. Remember when the form gets submitted, this field will be comma separated list of IDs. So I'll set the author IDs to IDs.split by a comma. And that way it'll set the authors when that form gets submitted. And finally, I need to set the attribute accessible line here so that we accept both name and our author tokens uh, attribute as well in the form. So now if I reload the form here, you can see I now have an authors field, which I could insert the IDs manually, but I want the token input plugin to handle this. So let's take a look at how to set that up for this form field. So on that token input page, you can scroll down and see some documentation. And to enable this plugin, you just call token input on your text field and then pass it a URL. And that URL should just return some JSON uh, for each item that should appear in the autocomplete list as the user's typing. So that should have an ID and name parameter for each entry in the JSON list. And you can narrow that down using the queue parameter, which is passed in to that URL uh, for 
which contains the text that the user is typing to narrow down the autocomplete list. So now we can apply this to our application, and I'm going to add it into the application JavaScript file, which gets included by default. First, we'll make sure our DOM is loaded, and then we want to fetch our form field, which is going to be called book author tokens. And that's just the ID that Rails gives it automatically. And we'll call token input on this to enable the plugin and then pass in the URL to fetch some JSON for the autocompletion. This is going to be called authors.json, which we'll set up next. Now you can also pass in some options as a second argument here, which I found it necessary to pass in an option called cross domain and set it to false because for some reason it was defaulting to using JSONP format in my tests. So setting this to false will ensure it's just using the standard JSON format. So now we just need to get the authors.json URL working. I already have an authors controller, so I just need to make the index action respond to the JSON format. So taking a look in that authors controller, you can see it's pretty standard scaffolding in here. And I just need to make this index action respond to JSON. So we'll add a respond to colon here and add a uh, HTML format, make it default, and make the JSON format just render out that list of authors in JSON format, just like that. Let's see what this returns. So if we try going to this authors JSON URL, you can see this is what's returned. It has some nice JSON, but notice it's nesting each individual author into an author root tag here, which we don't want that. We just want it to list um, the ID and name parameters straight directly in the array. Now, if you don't have a name parameter in your model, you might need to do some customizing of this as well, but we'll just, since we do have a name parameter, let's just remove this root option. Now, there are ways to remove the root option globally, but just for a quick fix right here, we, all we have to do is just map this array to the attributes list for each of the authors. Let's try this out. So now you can see if we reload our page with our JSON here, it now just removes the root option. So it's just the plain set of attributes for each of the authors. And the important part is the name and ID options, which is what the plugin will use. And it'll just ignore all of the others, but you might want to clean out the created at and updated at times if a bandwidth is an issue. All right, let's give this a try. We can go to our books form and we have our authors field there. If we start typing in something, uh, you can see we get a whole list of all of the authors. Instead, we want it to limit and filter out just the authors that match the given text we type in. So going back to our authors index action, we need to filter out this list of authors using where here. We could just say our name is like a given query. And we'll use the parenthesis uh, percent signs here to search around it. And remember our Q parameter is passed in through the plugin. So that'll be just the text that the user types in. So now when we go back to our form, you can see that the authors we enter into here, they filter through to exactly what we type. And let's try just submitting this book by giving it a name, create a book, and notice I created the book and assigned the authors automatically. Now, one problem we have though is what if we try editing this book? You can see that the form uh, it no longer displays the authors in this field here. So we need some way to pre-populate this field with the authors that are already in that book. Now the token input plugin supports this option called pre-populate where you just pass in some JSON into it and it'll pre-populate that list of tokens. So going to our application JavaScript file, I can add the pre-populate option into here and then just assign it to some JavaScript. But the question is, how do we get the JavaScript for the pre-populated content? Well, I like to pass this in through a data option tag in our input field. So Let's call it data, let's call it data pre. And then this just needs to be the JSON which gets pre-populated. So to do that, we'll just fetch our book, the authors, and then map the attributes into there just like we did in our controller, and then call to JSON on this. That way it'll be the pre-populated JSON. And then we can just fetch this directly in here. So we'll do our book author tokens, and then say uh, data pre on here. And that'll be uh, the proper JSON format uh, for the pre-populated content. So when we hit reload on our page here, remember we're editing a book and there's our two authors which show up. So let's try adding an author and removing an author in this list here. And so now it should say Eric and Richard 
on our book, and when we submit it, it now changes the authors to Eric and Richard. So both adding and removing authors work when we're updating our book. Pretty easy. So now what about themes? This is using the default theme, which comes with the plugin. So what if we want to change this to the Facebook theme? How do we do that? Well, to do that, you just have to go to your application layout file and change the token input CSS to use whatever theme you want. So we can say Facebook theme here. And then we just have to go to our application JavaScript file and then change it to use our given theme. So we just set the theme option to Facebook. And of course you can add whatever theme you want and customize it to fit your needs. So now when we hit reload on this edit form here, you can see instantly it switches to the Facebook theme and it's really easy to switch themes to whatever you want and change it to look however you want by customizing the style sheets. So this is a really nice solution for handling many to many uh, associations in Rails using the token input plugin. I hope you enjoyed it.